Good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us tonight. It is Monday, September 18th, 2023, and this is our regularly scheduled Board of Education meeting. Uh, as usual, could you please take a second and silence your phones? And after doing that, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. Thank you very much. Uh, before we get into our roll call this evening, um, I would like us to take a moment of silence to reflect upon, pray for, and honor the life of Marshall St. Sauver. After that, Penny's going to give us share a few words with us. Thank you. Penn? Thank you, President McFarland. Uh, yes, last week our school community experienced a loss with the passing of Marshall St. Felver. Marshall was a ninth grader at Dow High School and was a member of the ninth grade football team. Before becoming a Charger, Marshall was a student at Jefferson Middle School, Central Park Elementary, and started with us at Carpenter Elementary. On behalf of Midland Public Schools, know that our deepest and most sincere sympathy is with Marshall's family, friends, and anyone who is grieving this loss, including our school staff at Dow High, Jefferson, and our elementary schools. Last week, I called Jennifer, uh, Marshall's mom, and uh, expressed my condolences and condolences on behalf of the district and we talked for a moment about the words and the messages in Marshall's obituary. And as we talked, it seemed clear that there was a particular part we're sharing, and she gave permission for me to share this. So I'm, I'm quoting. Above all, Marshall was Marshall. We are proud of who he was. The best way to honor his memory is to go out and try new things. Break the rules when necessary. Take on each new day with bravery. Laugh hard, laugh often. Be kind to each other. Okay. Thank you, Penny. All right, moving into our agenda. Uh, Mr. Hatfield, roll call, please. <clears throat> yep. President McFarland. Here. Vice President Rausch. Here. Secretary Hatfield is here. Treasurer Lauterbach. Here. Member Blazy Here. Member Ringgold? Here. Member Horowitz? Present. All right. Okay, we've got everybody tonight. Uh, moving on to our consent agenda, that's item two. Uh, we have 2.1 approval of the minutes from August 21, 2023 regular meeting. Item 2.2 is a list of staff who have announced their resignation as well as the effective dates. Item 2.3 is approval of the school system's bills for the month of June 2023 in the amount of $11,235,356. Item 2.4 is a request to authorize legal payments. Uh, the list of the invoices uh, can be found in the agenda. And with that, I will accept a motion for the consent agenda. I move adoption of the consent agenda items 2.1 through 2.4. I support it. Motion by Mr. Lauterbach, support by Mr. Hatfield. Any additional discussion? No. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion carries, thank you. Uh, next up, we have item three, presentations to the board. 3.1, uh, Shining Stars, Penny. Well, this is gonna be fun. Come on up. So excited to present our shining star, one of our shining stars, to Angela Pranny. She joined the MPS team in 2015 as a paraprofessional at East Lawn Elementary. Feel free to fact check me <laughs> at any point. <laughs> she transferred to the transportation department as a substitute bus driver in 2017 and then became a permanent bus driver in 2018, the position that she still holds currently. 
Angela was also previously employed through our food service company, Chartwells, as a contracted staff member. She was nominated for a Shining Star by a colleague, and among their comments were the following. You did an outstanding <laughs> job. This is so great. You did an outstanding job of assisting a student who experienced a medical emergency while students were boarding her bus. The situation called for immediate action, and she did what was necessary to care for the student while maintaining her poise. She was an outstanding example of grace under pressure when a student experienced this medical emergency. She responded to the student while also helping guide the other students back to school. After the ambulance arrived, I witnessed her checking in with the other students, giving hugs and high fives as needed. The situation was handled beautifully. Thank you so much. Congratulations. And that's our gift to you, that you can leave now. Have <laughs> <laughs> a good night. I don't think our other Shining Star is with us tonight, but I think it still warrants uh, reading the nomination. Kyle Wood. Uh, Kyle joined the MPS team in 2020 when he was hired as a third grade teacher at Plymouth. He moved from teaching third grade to kindergarten, which is the position he currently holds. He earned his Bachelor of Science degree in elementary education from Ferris State at Kendall College of Art and Design. He was nominated by a parent, and among their comments are the following. My son used to struggle with his ADHD diagnosis. I was apprehensive about the start of kindergarten and his ability to manage his emotions. My fears were completely unfounded as Mr. Wood made my son feel successful, confident, and excited about school. My son cannot stop talking about what's going on in class. He has made friends, he, has, he is reading, and feels empowered to tackle tough emotions and challenges. We can credit Mr. Wood for making my son feel welcomed, loved, safe, and successful in school. We are so thankful for Mr. Wood. Congratulations to Kyle Wood. Okay, Penny, we'll uh, move right into 3.2, presentation of 2023 Employee Awards. Trying to figure out the mic situation. Sorry, I'll just use this one. I don't think uh, these folks are with us tonight. If, if you are, please come on up. Uh, but we just wanted to take a moment to acknowledge uh, here at the board meeting the award winners for the Distinguished Service Award. These were presented at our opening session in front of our entire staff, and it was a lovely celebration. And you can see the beautiful faces of our team members who were honored with the Distinguished Service Award. Tracy Chamberlain is part of our technology department, an IT project manager, systems analyst and there were lovely things said about her uh, collaborative spirit and the way that she serves behind the scenes in the tech department. Lynn Burns is an administrative assistant at HH Dow High School, and uh, lots of positive comments about Lynn uh, in the presentation, how she is a, a smiling face to those who come to Dow High and really holds the team together. Uh, I think there might have even been a comment that she really knows how to keep Dow High moving forward and maybe some who think she actually runs that office uh, mm -hmm. pretty well. So we were very happy to honor Lynn. Olga Mulvaney is a paraprofessional at Midland High School, and it was um, really a wonderful opportunity to celebrate the work that our paraprofessionals do, and Olga is a shining example of a paraprofessional who really cares deeply for students and really rises uh, to the occasion, and we're very happy to celebrate Olga. Our last Distinguished Service Award recipient was J.R. Borneman, who is the manager at Central Auditorium. Another uh, member of our team who works behind the scenes 
isn't often really seen a lot out in, in the individual schools because he is making sure that Central Auditorium is ready to go for all of our productions. And so that was an extra special opportunity because we had to surprise him, given that he was the one kind of running the show during that award ceremony. So uh, really happy to honor JR. We also, at our opening session, had an opportunity to honor teachers with the Gerstacker Excellence in Teaching Award. And a similar format, it's a bit of a surprise, and there were videos that were created to honor each of these winners. And here are these beautiful smiling faces. Uh, Cassandra Kramer was honored from Chestnut Hill Elementary, Stacy Capua from Adams Elementary, Andrew Zimmer from Jefferson Middle School, and Connie Biesensteger from, high school, from Midland High School. And we could go on and on and say lots of amazing things about all four of these folks. I think I shared the opening uh, ceremony video with mm -hmm. you, so you're welcome to go back and, and see that uh, for yourselves. But we are just really proud of these four, and they really exemplify the best of, of our teaching staff. Thank you to the Gerstacker Foundation for continuing to support this opportunity to recognize excellence in our district, both with the Gerstacker Awards and with the Distinguished Service Awards. Well, a representative from Gerstacker couldn't be with us for the ceremony, we did send a lovely thank you follow-up note um, along with information about all of our award winners for this year. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Penny. Uh, moving on, we're at item 3.3. We have uh, with us tonight Jessica Rolf from Yo and Yo with our 2022-23 audit report. Good evening, everybody. I'm Good here evening. tonight to go through the results of the financial audit for the year ended June 30th, 2023. Um, we met with FFO committee a few weeks ago, went through everything in a little more detail. You guys have a lot of stuff in front of you, but what I'm going to go through tonight is just the PowerPoint, kind of summarizes everything and all those reports that were given to you. Um, the first slide here are your audit results. So this is what we're hired to do, is to give an opinion on your financial statements. We had an unmodified opinion, again this year, so that's the highest level of assurance you can receive, the best opinion you can get. It means that the financials are prepared in accordance with the standards that they're supposed to be, and that we feel they're free of any material misstatements. Um, I will bring attention to, and you'll see it a little bit as we talk here, is there was a new standard we adopted this year. Gatsby's been very busy with these standards. If you remember back to last year, we implemented leases. This year we implemented SPIDAs as the short term, stands for Subscription-Based Information Technology Arrangements. So much like leases, any sort of software agreement we're now showing as an asset and a liability on the books. So pretty much washes to about zero, but another new asset and liability similar to leases. First here we have the general fund, so we're going to focus on your main operational fund tonight. Um, first slide here is the balance sheet, so all the assets and liabilities of the school district as of June 30th, 2023. Um, if you look at total assets there, you'll see we're at about 44.7 million this year, an increase of about 2.3 million from the prior year. As we talk throughout, we'll also talk about state aid. State aid was quite a bit higher this year. Um, and that's what's resulting in the higher assets as well because we had a higher receivable at the end of the year for state aid. Liabilities, you'll see we're at about 10.6 million this year. Pretty consistent um, with the numbers from last year. No big changes there. Fund balance up about 2.1 million. And we'll see that as we get to the next slide as well. But that's what we added to our fund balance this year for general fund. Next, we have our statement of revenues and expenses, so the income statement of the general fund. Um, you'll see revenues, we're at about 109 million. That's a $16.5 million increase from last year. Two main things, state aid up about 14.4 million. A lot of that is MIPSER's money that's coming in and going right back out to pay for those retirement liabilities. Um, federal money also up about 1.1 million, mostly due to more ESSER funding spent this year compared to last. And typically when revenue goes up, so does expenditures. We get all these federal monies and state aids, but we have to use them for certain purposes. So you can see the expenditures increase by a pretty similar amount to the revenues. Overall, the change in fund balance, so the net income, is a little over $2 million to the general fund this year. 
Next up, we compare your actual results to that final budget for general fund. You can see actual results were quite a bit better. Um, I've seen this at about all my districts. There's a little unknown with some of the state aid money. Um, I know you guys had some employer costs budgeted for that came in a little lower than expected. And then those SPIDAs, everybody kind of over budgeted. We didn't know how much we were gonna have to show in revenues and expenses. There were a lot of calculations that went into that. So everybody was a little conservative on that side to make sure we didn't have any budget overages. Next, we have your general fund revenue, just broken out in little slices as to where it comes from. Um, you can see the bulk of the funding coming from the state at about 69%. That was about 2% higher than it was last year. Um, all the other buckets there, your federal, local, et cetera, were pretty consistent um, with the year before. Same thing for expenditures. We always look at where every, all those expenditures are going. The biggest expense for any district is obviously those salaries and benefits at about 82% this year which was a little bit of a decrease from last year by 4%. Um, everything else, again, fairly consistent, maybe 1% or 2% changes from the year before. Comparatively, we look over the last five years, and you'll see when we look at all these things is that revenues and expenses have really gone up. The school districts have been receiving a lot of funding for ESSER, for state aid, for all different types of things. Um, but the key thing to remember with some of that is it is one-time funding, right? All these numbers have been inflating every year. But ESSER is going to go away soon, and a lot of these funds that have been pouring in are going to kind of go back down. Same thing here, just another way to look at those revenues and expenses per pupil. So you can see that as you're taking in revenue, it's consistent with the expenses that be, are being spent on a per pupil basis. Um, you, I went and looked at your pupil numbers as I was doing this and pretty consistent year to year, a small decline, which is what most districts are seeing. I think this year we were down about 46 from the year before. And this is always kind of the fun slide everybody likes to look at is what your unassigned spendable fund balance is as a percentage of expenditures. So you can see this year we're at about 30%. Um, MDE typically recommends at least 15 to 20%, so you guys are definitely healthy in that regard. I would say most of my districts are on the higher end right now. A lot of funding's been coming in, so it's, times have been good for school districts in comparison to some of the times of the past. Um, I will say it's a little bit down from years prior, and a lot of that is just kind of how the formula works. So I said there's been a lot of one-time funding or a lot of pass-through funding. So as they've been increasing money for MIPSERS and you're getting it in and then you're spending it right back out, that's inflating that expenditure number, which in turn is making that percentage a little lower. So even though your cash and everything's probably better than it has been in the past, that number seems a little lower just because of those ins and outs. We also look there is at the equivalent of how far you could operate based on what you have in fund balance right now based on a calendar year and a school year. So you can see those numbers again a little bit lower than the year before because of that expenditure fluctuation. Um, now I'm going to go through each bond. You have a couple bonds still out there. Um, the Series 2 bond you can see is about done. Um, we will be doing a bond audit shortly on that. Typically when it reaches 95% complete, we're required to do an audit of those funds. So that will be conducted probably in the next few months here. Next, you still have the energy conservation bond, also getting pretty well spent. I had there you're at about 93% as of the end of the year. So that one's coming close to a close as well. And then we have the newest one, which is our Series 3 bond, which was issued in March 2023. Only a little under 2% spent as of year end, so that will be the one ramping up for the next year. That's really all I had in terms of the numbers. So now here's the results. Um, you can see for our financial statements that we just went through, we had no findings this year again, so that was all clean. The other thing we do is we audit your federal dollars. So we look specifically at all the federal money you're receiving and we have to audit specific programs depending on a calculation. Um, the programs we audited this year was the Education Stabilization Fund, which is ESSER, and then your Nutrition Cluster. Those made up about 83% of your total federal expenditures. We made a good dent on testing a lot of the federal money you received. Um, same thing, no findings, unmodified opinion, which is a clean opinion, so no concerns came up during that federal um, fund audit. 
And other than that, that's really all I have to report. Another clean year. Everything went well, looked, went smoothly. And that's all I have, unless you have questions for me. Are there any questions? Brad? Nope. Okay. Thank you very much. We appreciate your time and effort. Yep, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Scott, might I make a comment? Of course. So this, um, this is really wonderful to have a clean audit like this, and I just want to recognize, first off, Brian for leading our business office team, and not to diminish Brian's leadership, but the people who really do the work, and Lori Holderby is with us tonight, John McClelland and her entire team. Um, I don't, it's hard to describe the amount of work that goes into a typical year's audit, and each year the added layers of uh, the new requirements and certainly these grant funds have created a little extra work, would you say, Lori? Um, <laughs> yes, so thank you to you and your team. Please pass that along that we really appreciate their diligence. I think it speaks to the fact that we have a lot of processes in place that really work and that we have people who we know are highly skilled and we can trust to do great work. So thank you and thank you, Brian. And um, looking forward to next year. And thank you, Jessica. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next up is item 3.4. This is, uh, I think, going to be a standing item um, yep. for the next year or so until we uh, get this completed. Uh, this is our superintendent search process update. And Phil's going to fill us in on that. Yeah, so after the board approved the... Oh, I'm sorry, Phil, let me stop you. 3.3 um, was an action item. I overlooked that. I apologize. Oh, good catch. Um, yes, so good catch. With, with that, I will accept a motion to... We'll make a motion to accept the 2022-23 audit report as presented. I'll second the motion. Okay, motion by uh, Mr. Rausch, second by uh, Mrs. Horowitz. Um, any additional discussion on the audit report? We can say that to let all of you know that obviously we've talked about it over and over and over again that ESSER funds are diminishing and going away and yes that is number one on our radar of what does not get renewed and what service can we still provide that that money did allow us to provide so all those things are on the radar. Thanks Brad. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay motion carries. Uh, Phil, I'm sorry for the interruption. No, you're Please good. continue. All right, so item 3.4 is a superintendent search update. Um, after we discussed the RFP last month and approved it, we sent the RFP directly to the following firms, including MASB, Michigan Leadership Institute, Ray & Associates, Hazard Young, ETA, um, and Associates, and then School Exec Connect. The RFP was additionally posted on the MPS website and Sigma, which is the state of Michigan's RFP site, and that has a deadline to submit proposals by October 6th at 5 p.m. Um, I do note that the uh, presentation we shared a few months ago, we talked about narrowing the RFP responses down to three firms and then interviewing those firms at the October meeting, which is currently scheduled for October 16th. Mm -hmm. I think just as a board, we should discuss um, how we select those three firms to bring back in for interviews. So I'd like to make a motion for consideration that the board empowers the three of us on the subcommittee, which are Scott, myself, and Brad, to make the selection of the three um, and then present those three to the board for consideration. Obviously, we'd, we'd also submit in the agenda packet all of the RFP responses. Okay, I will support that. Discussion? So uh, will you share the criteria, the selection of criteria? How, how will the, the selection of criteria be? For narrowing down the three, I think that would be the work of the subcommittee. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then because we're making the the down selection 
decision, I think we should post the subcommittee meeting publicly, if that makes sense. Is there is there anything in bylaws or anything like that that says how we need to procedurally do this to give the authority to the committee? Not that I know of. I, I think we're doing it by way of motion. Yeah, I think by way of motion we'll we would do it, and as long as we do the subcommittee as open door. The other, I mean, the other option would be we would have to schedule a special meeting, meeting before all the October 16th, but after October 6th. We're still not making any decisions for any. We're just bringing forth recommendation right. of if, three. If we get to interview, if we get five, we're going to bring three forward. Right. Right. Yeah, and that's even assuming we get the responses back in time. So just kind of putting maybe the cart before the horse, but at least we'll be prepared if we do. I guess after the um, subcommittee's top three are posted, if there are concerns about why numbers four and five weren't selected where we have the option to open that up for discussion absolutely yeah how yeah how would we but they wouldn't be able to be at the meeting for an interview on the it, to get them back in the mix or to understand why the subcommittee made the decision that it did i guess i think first would be why the subcommittee made the decision they did and then after a robust discussion if there's some concern possibly get them back in the mix I think you would know the why when you're presented with the three. You know, we would outline here's why we selected these three based on the information we gathered, et cetera. The uh, criteria should give give them should give us a why. Yeah. Get back to the why. Yeah. Okay. To your second point, I don't know that there's an answer to that that I know. I guess I don't know. We cross the bridge when we get there. I think. I mean the other the other option is we just meet all seven of us in this room publicly before, be, after the sixth and before the sixteenth. <coughs> I'm I'm comfortable with the three of you vetting and making a recommendation to us. If for some reason one of us sees something that's really gone haywire, I, I guess we can cross that bridge when we come to it. But you three of you have gotten us this far. I trust your process as long as we're complying with the Open Meetings Act to reduce it down to three. By all means, I, I'm I'm comfortable with that process, okay. and I would so move if if you need a motion to approve the process. I'll support it. So the original motion was oh, Phil, but I'll Phil already motion. moved. So okay, I'll I'll moved, support you Phil's motion. Yeah, supported. exactly. Okay. Yep. All right. So just so we're let me clarify that. So we have a motion to allow the selection committee to, to develop criteria and select, if there are more than three responses, select three to bring forward to the board for interviews in this forum at the regularly scheduled October 16th meeting. Okay. And that the meeting of the subcommittee would be an open meeting. Correct. Supported by Mr. Lauterbach. Any additional discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. The motion carries though. All right, next up we have requests to address the board and I have uh, two tonight, but I know uh, we had some latecomers, so I will give you an opportunity if you so desire. Uh, first up we have Mr. John Kelly. Welcome Mr. Kelly, thanks for joining us. Hello, um, just wanted to come address the board uh, regarding something that I don't, could be a topic that's come up many times, but my first time here and with a second grader at Chestnut Hill, um, myself went there, I think 98-ish, I'm not sure, but <laughs> um, just uh, the parking and the drop off and pick up is something I just wanted to bring to your attention. I'm not, I feel like, you know, there's some big renovations went on recently with the gyms and stuff looks good. There's extra loops. But um, as a civil engineer, a lot of deal, you know, with pedestrian vehicular traffic, I'm currently a ma project manager at MDOT and it's almost like the, the OCD of traffic zip zapping when I go through there, how, 
I don't use negative words, but it could be more efficient. And uh, so something I'm going to bring up, and then we talked about, maybe I'll go to the, you know, the school itself, but I also see on Ask Midlands, or I've been told there's a lot of chatter, all the other elementary schools, and kind of bring to the attention the reality of, you know, say, two working parents, you know, daycare costs 2600 a month. You know, I got, we got two other younger kids that be coming through the system too, so that's why that's cost so much. But the portion of that, you know, we got to take them to the daycare to bus there and back. You can't really, you know, you drop off 8.30-ish. That drop off is usually, you know, you loop around, it's not bad. Um, the pickup is where it's just, I, I feel like we could maybe do something. Some, I, I'm kind of offering more or less myself to help and maybe I can, you know, put together some extra minds and see what we can come up with. Um, the pickup sits, it could take, you know, half hour or more. A lot of people show up real early and I suppose if you, or someone works from home or something, you have extra time, well, we don't and it's, you know, how do you, so I guess like our situation, we can't actually pick our kids up ourselves. So it's just that extra cost. And that's a reality, I think, for a lot of families where either you're waiting in line or you're parking, you know, three blocks down the road. So, you know, or it's, it's, it's kind of crazy, you know. So something I want to bring up, I'm sure this has come up, but something more or less maybe offering to help. Um, Great. It should be a little bit easier to get kids to and from school. It's a lot of cost without, you know, I know the buses can't come. Uh, I think when I grew up, yeah, everyone, kids would walk. It's probably thinking kids walk, <laughs> you know, but it's like no other kids walk, and I'm not comfortable with my, you know, seven-year-old who might have some attention issues walking. We're far enough away or it's just not be comfortable with that by himself. Or uh, I think buses ran, but, you know, in, uh, inside a mile and a half, it, I, I'm not sure when that changed. But just something to bring up, and I'll, I'll continue asking, maybe brainstorm. Maybe do something to help, but just wanted to felt guilty if I didn't come and say something about it. So hopefully I'll be back at some point. Okay, thank you. We appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Kelly, the number that you provided, that's the best number to, to reach you? Yes. Should yes. somebody want to reach out and yep. touch base yep. on this? That's my cell phone. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Appreciate your time tonight. Thank you. Okay. Next we have Mr. Joe Bonides. Welcome, Mr. Bonides. Thank you for joining us. Thank you to our interim superintendent for meeting with my wife and I to help clear the air and provide background to some of the things that have been clear from this side of the table. Uh, now, uh, now that the era of Sharrow has ended, I would like to go back in history and try to put a few things in context. Back in ancient times, pre-COVID, pre the board would cheerfully receive public comment from a few people for five minutes and the idea of board follow-up was always mentioned. When COVID and the mass mandates hit, the size of the audience went ballistic for a few months. A number of people who wished to speak also went up and the board clipped the time people could speak from five minutes to three minutes so the meeting would not take too long. This sounded like a temporary measure at the time, but once a liberty is lost, it is rarely regained. Later, <coughs> the new Thune bylaw package set the three minutes as permanent policy, though it is not clear whose idea that was, the law firms or Charles. Ironically, Mask issues were not the only thing being curbed at that time. This was when the three paragraph public intimidation language was added to the agenda for public speaking. And also to, to the time when there started to be public comment on the invasion of CRT into the school systems under the DEI flag. No other public meeting has this intimidation language and ironically, it was okay for the superintendent to slander the public, but the most aggressive public comments have actually been from the DEI supporters examples available on request, I only have three minutes. My wife and I have spoken dozens of times between us. I have received one feedback from the board to clarify a technical point. Going back to your pre-COVID claims that the board would follow up as necessary, I will officially request feedback on why is the three paragraph intimidation section in the agenda template. It is not stated in the bylaws or the Open Meeting Act. The city of Midland has nothing like it. The county board of commissioners has nothing like it. My township has nothing like it. Are the people speaking at this board more dangerous than any place else? I really should not have to consult a lawyer before I come here. And if your legal firm feels this is important to have on every agenda, you might consider never uttering the term transparent again. Thank you. Thank you. 
Okay, is there anybody else in the audience who wishes to address the board? Going once, twice. Okay, we'll close the floor and move on. Thank you very much. Uh, next up, we have item five on our agenda tonight, finance, facilities, and operations. Uh, 5.1, we have committee minutes. Mr. Lauterbach. Thank you, Scott. Committee met on September 5th, 2023. We discussed the 22-23 audit. Ms. Rolf reviewed the 22-23 audit with the committee. Topics included various sections of the audit report, including financial statements, the single audit, and the governance communication. The audit proclaimed an unmodified opinion or clean audit and an addition of approximately $2 million to the general fund balance. June financials. June financials were reviewed with the committee. July and August financials will be presented at the October Board of Education meeting. This is the MPS traditional practice due to year-end reporting and focus on the audit. Zero eyes. The administration will recommend entering a five-year contract with zero eyes for weapons monitoring services at MPS school buildings. If approved, 23-24 safety grant funds will be utilized. Food service van. Administration will recommend ordering a 2024 Ford Transit cargo van to be utilized by the food service department. Funds for the truck were built into the 2324 Food Service Fund spend down plan. IB AP testing fees. The committee discussed extending coverage of IB and AP testing fees through the 2023 20 it says 2034, but it should say 2024 school year. Um, uh, the hold harmless tax rate. The committee discussed potential ballot language for the renewal that will be placed on the May 2024 ballot. And finally, facility study. Demographic information related to the facility study was shared with the committee. Our next FFO meeting will be October 2nd of 2023. I hope that before these are adopted by the board, we can correct that date and that typo. Okay, thank you. That's all I have. Okay. Thank you. Um, next up, we have an action item. Uh, this is our food service van purchase. Mr. Bruton. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, we're recommending this evening that we order a 2024 Ford Transit 350 cargo van. This will also have a lift gate, and the order will be coming from Lunghammer Ford of Owasso, Michigan. The total price for this van and the lift gate is $58,726. The vehicle, of course, will be assigned to the Food Service Department. We are recommending this purchase through the state My Deal bidding program, which follows our purchasing procedures and will be paid for out of food service funds. Excellent. I will accept the motion regarding item 5.2. Move the adoption of item 5.2 for the purchase of the 2024 Transit 350 van. Support. Motion by Mr. Lauterbach, support by Mr. Rausch. Any additional discussion regarding 5.2? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Okay, thank you very much. Motion carries. Next up, item 5.3, Mr. Bruton. Thank you. Um, we are recommending this evening that the district extends our temporary coverage of all costs that are associated with students taking both IB and AP tests. Um, as Member Lauterbach pointed out, not 20 through 2034, but through 2024. Um, if approved this evening, ESSER 3 funds will support the costs of implementation as they did last year. Okay. I I'll move go ahead. to support um, coverage of IP, IBAP testing fees through spring of 2024. Support. Motion by Ms. Ringgold, support by Mr. Lauterbach. Any additional discussion for item 5.3? Just to uh, highlight that this is ESSER 3 funds. This will be expiring soon. This is just, this is a one-off uh, coverage, a gift from the board that we are using funds that we have to cover this for the students and past 2024, we will probably revert back to the old program or we will at least entertain what the cost is in those fees and look at it again as a board. And Brian, what's the total amount of the fees that we're covering? About $110,000 per okay. year, sir. Thank you. Um, Am I also remember because we covered them last year we did. Correct. as well. Mm -hmm. Was that out of ESSER or was that out of a uh, fund yes. extra fund balance? ESSER. It was ESSER as well last Correct. year. Okay. Brian, Brian, go ahead. Brian, not for today, but maybe an action item that could be helpful <coughs> coming back as we start to think about long range would be are there other fees that our students incur that can keep them from achieving their full potential, whether it's skilled trades or ABIP, any 
kind of the cover the full gamut just so we have awareness to it at a future board meeting might be help, really helpful. Yes, sir. Thanks. Okay, good comments. Um, any additional discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, none. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Uh, next up, item four, this is the zero eyes. Mr. Bruton. Thank you. For transparency, the proposal we are giving to you this evening is identical to a proposal that we gave you last year. None of the numbers have changed nor any of the details, um, but we did want to bring it back to you because it does have updated dates on the contract. Um, we were going to solicit federal school safety funds for this last year. Um, we still do not have word on that grant, but our patience is wearing a touch thin, and we have available to us state school safety grant funds. So since we are going to change the verbiage of how we're going to fund it, we wanted to bring it back for full transparency. So we are recommending that we enter a five-year service agreement with Zero Eyes Incorporated. Um, they are out of Concho Hocken, I hope I'm saying that right, Pennsylvania, that's a mouthful, to provide a weapon detection services through <coughs> MPS surveillance cameras. We will be using the state of Michigan school safety grant funds for this agreement if it is approved by the board this evening. The five-year total is $237,500. Okay, thank you very much. I will accept the motion. I move for approval of item 5.4, uh, entering a five-year deal with Zero Eyes Weapon Detection. Support. Motion by Mr. Hatfield, support by Mr. Rausch. Any additional discussion, questions? Just um, confirming this is using our existing cameras and this is just a program that then watches everything that we're already doing for weapons detection. Yeah, Superintendent Jaster is our most knowledgeable on this subject. Okay. Yeah, so it's AI software that is intended to function through our cameras and our, our tech staff has already worked with some of their folks behind the scenes just to prepare. Um, given there was approval tonight, we wanted to move forward quickly if this, if this occurred. Um, and, and yes, it functions through our cameras. The agreement is up to 193 cameras throughout the district. So we are gonna prioritize, um, you know, the bulk of those cameras will be elementary schools. We already have the Evolve systems at the secondary building. So this would uh, complement and give some additional support at secondaries too. So we would focus those strategically based on which um, recommendations came from the company themselves as to what cameras would be best for the software. How many cameras do we have right now? Hundred, uh, Dave, offhand, 374, 400? Four. Four, four, some, four, four some. So this, so would, this cover would cover about half of them, but the main thing is that you're covering exterior entrances and, and main corridors with the software. Okay. Um, the more uh, obscure areas, it, it's not necessary according to what we we were told working with the company initially. Okay. So, yeah. Good question, Jen. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion carries. Thank you very much. Next up, we have information with gifts. Mr. Bruton. Thank you. Uh, for information only, we are presenting seven gifts, the total $1,615. As you'll see in the agenda, all gifts have been donated to support the Dow High Robotics team. As is tradition, we'll honor the donors in the broadcast credits and through board correspondence, and we thank these donors for the support of the Dow High Robotics team. Thank you very much. Uh, next up, we are item six, human resources. There was not a study committee uh, meeting, so there are no minutes to read, so we'll move right into 6.1. Information, Mr. Jaster. Thank you. The board and staff extend their deepest sympathy to the family of Ms. Shirley Demers. Uh, Ms. Demers passed away August 12, 2023. She was employed as a paraprofessional at two buildings, Adams and Parkdale. And in addition, she did do some uh, library and clerical work in those buildings. She worked for MP MPS intermittently from 1958 to 1995, and she officially retired in 1995 with 15 years of service. Thank you. Uh, next up, item seven is correspondence to and from the Board of Education. 7.1 is information only. That's letters to the Board of Education from the individuals and entities listed. Uh, item 7.2 is for information as well. Uh, letters from the Board of Education. In this case, it's to Chestnut Hill PTO. Um, item eight, scheduled activities. 
Uh, there you will see a list of our remaining scheduled meetings for the year, as well as uh, our tentative dates for January, or for 2024, of course, pending approval. Um, next up, study discussion session. Are there any uh, points of clarification before we turn the floor over to Penny for final comments? Nope. Okay. Penny, the floor is yours. I don't have much to say other than we are into the school year and things um, are feeling like we're hitting a good rhythm in our schools. I'm happy to share that now that things are settled a bit, agenda group is out Monday mornings uh, as we committed to having our meetings in schools. And I think it's good for us to be out and getting a pulse of what's happening and getting lots of good feedback from principals and staff that we are certainly more visible. Similarly, last week we started our classroom visit schedule at three schools and we have three more this week. And that's a great opportunity for us to uh, spend time with students and uh, teachers and just keeping a pulse on what's happening. I think we have some evidence already that just through those conversations, all of those that were able to identify some concerns early on and take care of them quickly. So that's feeling uh, really good and aligns quite well with uh, what I indicated was our commitment to building a stronger sense of connection and communication in an overall school community. That's all I have. Thanks for being here tonight. It's good to see all of you as well. And on your visits, if it happen, happens to be Chestnut Hill, uh, check out Mr. Kelly would probably let you get a check out the, yeah. the flow of traffic. Yes, I think we'll be on that. We'll take a look. We had a, at Chestnut Hill, we, there was a parent that did parking, like move people through. I don't know if they're still there or not, but it was a big deal, so. At Woodcrest, we had a name for that role. No, I, <laughs> <laughs> that was the most stressful part of everybody's day. Everybody's just day. getting through the drop-off yep. line. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Well, this is an Thanks. area I'm going to need to learn more we about. Need to, we Brian need to look at Chestnut Hill for sure. But yes. yeah. I know yes. we have certainly some constraints based on what, what the physical space looks like, and uh, we'll take another look at it. Okay. All right, thank you. All right, thank you. Well, there is uh, nothing left to do but accept the motion to adjourn. So moved. Support. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, we stand adjourned. Thank you.